like effective goal setting, I suppose, um, right now, like why, like when would we be like, right, yeah, fat loss is just perfect. Let's go for you. It's all, all go, all lights ahead, boom, fat loss. And then what would be some sort of like, uh, we'll call them red flags in your mind if someone came to you and they're like, I want to lose fat and you're analyzing their overall goals and you're like, this isn't uh, the correct situation for fat loss right now for you. Yeah, there are a couple of things that jump out as red and yellow flags, we'll say. Red flags being the kind of more absolute contraindications where I'm very unlikely to kind of go ahead and start this person on a diet. And yellow flags being more relative contraindications where, you know, there are potential points of concern, but not necessarily things that I'm immediately not going to to put someone on a diet um, because of. And some of the red flags, I suppose, would be very significant um, history of failed diets, recurring um, binge eating, plus or minus maybe a more formal eating disorder diagnosis. All of those things are, they're they're the low hanging fruit, really. They're the things that we, when we see them and we spot them, all right, let's address that um, ASAP. And sometimes addressing that, um, might just mean referral for further psychological interventions um, and, and more expert support. Because if someone is coming to us and, you know, especially if they're got like, let's say, binging and purging behaviors, um, they're already at a point where uh, they're quite lean and it's like, it's very clear that more fat loss isn't required or healthy, then those things are, are obvious red flags. And to be fair, I think... Um, most people would be familiar with that. Most um, personal trainers would be able to, to spot that and recognize that there's something pathological there. But there's kind of a step down from that where it's not very explicit, um, but more so implicit. And an example of that would be something like if someone has, let's say, been doing bikini competitions or bodybuilding physique competitions, and they've been doing that constantly over time um, for multiple years, let's say, and after each competition, they kind of gain lots of weight for a period of time and then they're immediately getting back into another competition. And from their perspective, they view it as a very, you know, normal relationship they have with their body and with uh, their goals. They think that this is normal. But when you dig a bit deeper, you notice that, oh, you know, you never actually recovered a normal menstrual cycle. Um, you have very low libido, male or female. Um, you've got other symptoms like maybe low mood, anxiety, et cetera that potentially are tied in with these repeated efforts of prolonged restriction and dieting to sub-physiological levels of body fat. There are some of the things that won't immediately uh, jump out at you unless you ask a little bit further, because what often actually happens is that when people are in that more expert position, I guess, because if you're competing in a bodybuilding show or a physique competition or bikini competition or whatever, you know a little bit about fitness. Like you probably think that you, you know what you're doing. And it's very easy when you have a bit, a bit of knowledge to justify your own behaviors. Um, and we say this all the time where some people will basically be 100% on plan or off plan. And what happens here is people will be 100% on plan for the 12 weeks or 16 weeks or 20 weeks that they're preparing for their competition. And then afterwards, it's just a free for all, eat whatever they want, stop going to the gym, until they eventually get back on plan. So there are some of the things that I would be very hesitant to push someone towards fat loss uh, without addressing, especially if there's explicit health complications, whether they be psychological or physiological or both. Yeah, I mean, um, this is just on yeah. that. This is one of those things where it's like, you might not even realize that this is you. You might not even realize that this is the people that you follow. But a really you know, easy way to kind of spot this just out the gate is if you see someone competing in like the spring shows and then the autumn shows, you have to realize that they are basically dieting all year round, right? And you also start noticing this, especially in like, you know, competitors and stuff where, you know, after their show, they just, it's all throwback pictures. It's never like, oh, this is what I currently look like, you know? And then when they get, you know, about six weeks out again from the next show, they did the spring shows and then it's, you know, time has passed with all those throwback pictures. And then, you know, six weeks out from the, the next show, they're like, oh yeah, now here we go. I'm, you know, this is my current physique. You're like, you can pretty much assume that they've gone through some sort of, you know, restriction period to get competition lean, which is required for the sport. And then they've just basically been off plan or blown up afterwards. And it's like, this is not a good position mentally, psychologically, physically, like physiologically or anything to be in 
constantly, right? And again, you might think, okay, well, that's just competitors. That's not me. But just also think about your average dieter. They basically do the same thing. They'll diet down for 12 weeks. They're like, oh yeah, really on my shit. I'm really on point with all this stuff. And they might not actually get to like, you know, competition levels of leanness. Um, but they still end up in a position where it's, you know, lower than they potentially have ever been before in terms of body weight, in terms of body fat. And then they end the diet. And especially if the diet was not set up like correctly, it was not set up in a more sustainable manner. They then, you know, blow up again, gain a load of body fat. And then they are on a new diet there after that. You know, it's like they basically do 12 weeks of dieting, a month of binging, 12 weeks of dieting, a month of binging and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Right. So this applies not only if you're a competitor, it applies if you are just, you know, your average general population individual who finds themselves in this cycle of dieting down. Oh, I'm really on my shit. Oh, I'm all the way off my shit. Like everything is out the door. Everything is out the window. I I don't even know what a macro is anymore. I don't even know what protein is. I don't have any good health habits whatsoever. Um, And then they're just like, all right, how did I gain 20 kilos? I'm going to start a new diet phase, a really aggressive one, because, you know, the last time I was, you know, I blew up afterwards. So the only obvious, obvious option after that is to be more aggressive (laughs) in my approach. Right. And that's genuinely the way people think. And obviously that's, not conducive to long-term progress and just a further thing to that especially because it can seem like this you're we're almost just like criticizing people's approaches but a really good way to understand whether your approach is you know maintainable forever or you know sustainable whatever words you want to use um is if you actually know how to maintain and you actually have a plan of action for maintaining, right? Like if you follow someone and they've never talked about just like maintaining or sustaining the results that they've gotten, or you yourself have only ever thought of things in terms of I'm either on my shit or I'm off my shit. Like you need to realize that you are missing one third of the picture. You know, it's like this, this actual maintenance stuff. And while I say it's one third of the picture, realistically, it's the bigger part of the picture because while yeah you can diet down you can look for fat loss and while yeah you can be in this like surplus and you know gaining body fat gaining muscle or whatever like realistically there's a time point in your life where you want to focus on maintenance realistically there's a time point in your life where you want to really just focus on being able to sustain the results that you've got